Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's your man, DJ1. I'm in the building doing things a little different this time because I, I want to hit something that requires a lot of detail, but I was bet that I couldn't do it in less than five minutes. All right? So keep up with me. The best thing to do is pull out the gear with you. If not, take notes. All right, here we go. I'm going to teach y'all multiband processing in the Akai Force or MPC in five minutes. I think I can do it in four. All right, so here we go. Real quick. As you see, I got a project right here for the force, just so that you can look inside and see there's nothing tricky going on in the clips. That's what you got for one, two, okay? Made a little lo-fi thing, okay? So you hear that? All right, we're gonna go to mixer. So this is the trick. This is where it starts at. All right, let me put it on what you would normally see when you open it up your mixer. Just look for your input output, your, your I and O. That's what you want, all right? So if I go to input output, so for me, I like to send all of them to one subtract and then do my multi-process and stuff from that subtract. But you don't have to do that. You can set this up however you want it. But the trick is when I go to my sub, you see that right there? See how I got three, four right there? I'll put three, four. I'll put three and four is muted. That's my clean signal. That's the 100% clean signal. That's the signal that you do not want to hear. So if you put it on three and four or five, six, if you set it up for the 32 out, you put it on channels 29 and 30, right? You don't want to hear that, okay? That makes it where you go to your sins, you send all of your sins to your return tracks. So right now I got three frequencies pretty much because I'm using the kill EQ. But if I was using the para EQ, I would do four and I would have four separate uh, uh, frequencies that I can control. Now, if you go to your returns, those are all on one, two, or your main output. You see that? So that's what you're gonna hear, is whatever's coming out of those return tracks. Then on your return tracks, now this is how you set it up. I got one for lows, kind of do it like brow rising. If you don't know what brow rising is, look it up, B-R-A-U-R-E-R-I, -R -R -I, I mean Z-I-N-G, you can with this technique. All right, where he separates the frequencies, separates the instruments, compresses those individually, creates a vibe. Anyway, look it up. But that's pretty much the technique that I'm using. So then on my low frequencies, it's just my lows. Everything else is killed. My mids, just my mids. Everything else is killed. My highs, everything else is killed. Okay. Then I got a compressor to control each individual one. Then I got a stereo with her. So like I like my mids, I mean my lows, mono, my mids, um, kind of center, maybe a little bit wider. And now like my high is really wide. All right. Now I'm going to show you me controlling it. All right. Let's go. No mids. Let's say I want more mids than what I had. Boom. Let's say I want more highs. Yeah, you see that? And then I can trigger my mutes. Hey. Say right there. Now you can do all your processing. It's not just compression. So like I got stereo wideners on this. If I wanted to, I don't have it mapped. That's a whole nother thing right there. Comb filter on just my mids. I want my highs. Let's make them a little bit wider. You see? Multiband processing. I missed my mark at four at five minutes. Ah. But I did it in less than five. All right. Multiband processing in your MPC and a Kai Force. Have fun with it. Make sure you comment, tag me at the bottom, let me know what y'all came up with. Show me some cool little tricks and stuff that you got going with it. All right. All right, y'all. I'll holler at y'all later. Peace.